the Open Chain project held a workshop on the 23rd of October adjacent to Open Source Summit Europe. This workshop was intended to provide an atmosphere of sharing where companies and individuals could provide insights into their experience of compliance and compliance requirements across the supply chain in 2018. The workshop opened with a special discussion from Ueba-san at Fujitsu. Fujitsu has been using the SPDX format for some years, and they wanted to share their experience and to solicit interaction, collaboration, and mutual contribution from other companies involved in the Open Chain project and beyond. My team member is Metra of Meta SPDX Ms. Vlad. Our distribution is used for over 80 product, IBI, server system controller, and so on. Simple introduction of Meta SPD scanner. There's a chair here. Meta SPD scanner is the layer of source code license scanner. The input to Meta SPD scanner is OSS license code and patches come from third party. Meta SPDX scanner output SPDX files and Yocto project build a process add to SPDX. Meta SPDX scanner output SPDX format. Default scanner to SOX with reason authority 3 does not support CUI at this point. So it could be, not be used with the project. This page comparing output by Dusox Bits and Phosology. Left side ideal SPDX file. Dusox Bits license conclude file copyright no assertion. No, no output and license info file is mistake. And on the other hand, Osology is ideal SPDX output by Osology. Ideal SPDX file nearly called Osology output file. Osology available for Yoko project soon. We use host driver. Host driver is intended to enable control of a <coughs> server from Python programs. We are making available to use host driver in Meta SPDX scanner. So you can soon use Postology from Yoko project. Soon is a one or two months. Developed version succeeds in 800 package generic SPDX files. You are available to use high precision SPDX files. Let's use it include Meta SPDX scanner and SPDX file. Please give me feedback on Meta SPDX scanner and SPDX <coughs> topics. As slide future work for maintenance reason, we want to send less API calls for Solgy server to generate SPDX files. Let's improve SPDX files precision together. It's over. Thank you. Thank you. So I gather then Fujitsu is actually using SPDX in production today. Is that right? Yes. Uh, I know that some of the companies represented at the table today, like uh, Bosch, are using Bossology and SW360. I think that's correct, along with Siemens. Yeah. I think one of the things we can take away from your presentation today is that we might 
benefit from opening up some channels of communication between Fujitsu and Bosch and Siemens. It sounds like you're using slightly different tools. Uh, for instance, you both use Fossology, but you have slightly different tools for SPDX. Uh, but maybe by collaborating, we could move closer to a unified approach for scanning and sharing. What is interesting is that I understand that your use of SPDX today means that your suppliers and the suppliers to Bosch and Siemens may have the same clear package information. So it's one further step to making sure that we have unified approaches in the supply chain. Thank you so much for your presentation. Yeah, I think this kind of uh, information share is quite uh, informative. And also I hope another company to share this kind of information if we can, if, if they can. And one more thing is that I have slight concern about SPDX. That is, uh, I already talked with uh, Kate yesterday that uh, many people are misunderstanding that SPDX is only about SPDX ID, mm -hmm. identifier. The Linux community put all the SPDX identifier into every file. But that is really good to your progress. But SPDX in this. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. <coughs> so, anyway, SPDX, uh, that objective is not to, make a, uh, to put the SPDX ID in each file, but to make uh, some of the transparency in between the parties to, take, to inform about the open source of the information. So that maybe we would like to uh, make another, you know, uh, another you know, appeal for some of the uh, marketing of the SPDX that is not only the you know, SPDX identifier. After the conclusion of our special presentation by Fujitsu, we moved on to the workshop proper. The Open Chain workshops occur about once every three months, and this workshop, towards the end of the year, provided an opportunity for people to share their perspective on what's important for Open Chain in the real world. What do we need today to help companies go from understanding open source to confirming they've adopted all the key requirements of quality open source compliance programs? So what we'll do first now is we'll do a bit of a round table to see who's here because we've got quite a few people over. So I'm going to begin with myself, uh, Shane Coughlin, General Manager, Open Chain Project. Perhaps we can go around the table clockwise. OK, welcome, Jules. I think you are the. Uh, one and only academic at the table today, perhaps. <laughs> We've got another one. Yes. Two students. That's a record for us. <laughs> <laughs> a lecturer. <laughs> so we've got one lecturer and one student. We're getting very academic today. Uh, let's keep on going. You're closer to the mic. So, <laughs> hi, it's Alexius. Um, yeah, involved in the uh, open chain curriculum work program and uh, work for Intel. And I, I think, Alexius, uh, right now you're the only uh, work team chair we've, we've got here right now. So we're going to give you the honor of carrying a lot of the really cool stuff of the workshop. <laughs> Okay, keeping on our round robin of introductions. I am Matthew Crawford, I'm from Arm. I am Stefan Weiberg from Susan Linux. Colin Wolf, Sony Mobile. Martin Weisman, General, General Electric. I am Nobu Imada from Stats. Sakaru Weda of Sony Corporation. Shinsuke Kato from Panasonic. Microsoft. 
Okay. Can we bring that up? It's already muted. Yes, there's still a problem. Maybe disconnected Polycom and was a useful speaker of a microphone. Okay. Let's turn off that. Okay, I'm going to ask everyone to scoot up on the table. So, no more. Get closer, everyone. Yeah. 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 I want everyone to scoot up so we've got good audio because I notice you guys are pretty spread out. <laughs> is the mic on this laptop? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. He's not accessing it. No. All right. So, everyone who's scooted up, if you could continue your intros. I got to be Harry from University of Boya. Welcome on board. Thank you. Takuma Weber from Fujitsu. And on the line, could everyone confirm who they are? Sammy Atabani from Arm. So we've got Sammy from Arm. Dave Marr from Qualcomm. Yep. Hello. We've got Fukuchi San, who's uh, with Sony. Thank you. I'm going to try and. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hi there. Is that Kubota San from Sony? Yeah. And we have one other person muted. It's reading as Asish Nagdev. Is that correct? OK. No response on that muted line. But we'll assume that is correct. OK. And my name is Marcel Kuzman from Bosch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> A double introduction. Here's Marcel from Bosch. OK, I'm going to start sharing my screen. And we're going to pass over. And also, I'd like to add one. Another thing about SPDX. That's one of the work of the Japan Working Group effort. That is, the SPDX document is now on, on the way to be translated into Japanese. So that we'd like to make SPDX, what is a really SPDX meaning uh, to make uh, some of the uh, appeal to the Japanese people? And also, that kind of effort should be done within this unit group, I think. SPDX is not only the SPDX identifier, but SPDX has another unit purpose. That is to exchange the open source software information accurately among the parties. To give everyone on the line some context here, we had a little bit of a discussion about how uh, SPDX can be useful, but also some of the challenges involved in using it. So we had a little bit of an informal talk from our gentleman sitting in from Fujitsu, ex who explained that Fujitsu is using uh, Thanks. <laughs> no problem. Thanks. Fujitsu is using SPDX today in action, but there are some problems with the fidelity and so on of using it. And this is interesting because we also have some companies with expertise using SPDX at the table, like Bosch. So do you think, Marcel, that you might be able to hook up with Fujitsu and to talk through how you solved some of the problems using SPDX? Uh, well, I'm probably not the right one to do this, but uh, mm -hmm. yes, we could do a meeting, uh, extra meeting, because I would invite the experts. Uh, it's rather on the technical level that yeah. we approach it. And uh, yeah. By all means, so SPDX is something too much, I think. So that uh, we just need some of the subset of the SPDX. But uh, in accordance with the uh, open source software checker, they automatically you know, produce the SPDX file, as he mentioned, as an uh, pathology, is uh, making a clear, really good you know, output in terms of the SPDX. So that uh, if we get inclining to use that kind of software tool, Maybe SPDX will become another unique meaning. That is, uh, one party is using authority and another is using authority, and exchanging SPDX file and make us mutual, you know, a confirmation. That kind of system 
we can achieve among the you know, uh, open chain network networking world. Mm. Yeah, because one thing that's become really evident with open chain uh, is that as a standard, we seem to set a good baseline for people, but people continually have some challenges with implementation. Uh, and it sounds like using Fossology and SPDX can answer this. Uh, I gave a talk yesterday about the stack of solutions. Yeah. Open chain is kind of at the top as the global standard. And then we have things a little bit below. SPDX helps you set how you're doing package description. To do group helps you set up a program office. And then below that, we've got tools like Fossology for scanning. SW360 is a library, scan code scanning, a clearly defined, a library to keep information. What we don't yet have is a really elegant way of packaging this so that companies can have a turnkey solution, a reference solution, even if it's not meant to be production. Hey, Shane? Yep. Shane, do you I'll want people to, to raise discussion? How do you want to manage this? I mean, I have some comments I would like to make, but I, I'm not quite sure how you want this to, to interact. In the workshop session, um, and there may have been a problem on the line when I was setting those uh, examples, this workshop session is entirely open to conversation. So uh, if, if you've got an item to add, I'm going to give you the floor in a second. Uh, I'm just okay. going to give you the floor first because I noticed that Amanda had a, a comment. I was just going to ask that um, when you say there is a bit of implementation, do you mean the process of implementation or the content of what's implemented? Uh, I think before talking about the process, we really, need what kind of information is required by uh, such kind of being. Some kind of thing uh, consisted of Okay, so if you were saying that you needed an open source policy, what you were saying is 10 headings of things that you need to give policy to show good practice as opposed to giving a template policy? Well, policy is also one of the quite important things I yes. try to do. But I'd like to mention what is actually happening in the field of consumer electronics or some and the system. I was told one of the quite uh, recent examples. That is, uh, I have a, uh, no, no, please forget what I'm belonging to, to Sony, but I'd like to say something quite in, uh, challenging one. But uh, uh, just recently, I get, we get uh, one of the software development team from one semiconductor vendor. And that is a uh, semiconductor, that is a, a SDK for digital signal process, DSP. So that whole bunch of software will be packed into one field executable file. And we found it uh, there's GPO license code included. So that we have asked them to extinguish the GPO license code. And one week later, they said, we did it. And we checked the source code. And we have surprised that uh, they did to extinguish GPO license comment as well as the copyright. That's happening in the real world, so that uh, we are not uh, in reaching into the uh, phase of talking about the uh, process or whatever. But we are now at the quite view uh, our to tell why that kind of information of the open source software is so important. So that's something for maybe you feel it's quite extreme, extreme but uh, it's actually happening quite a bit, quite, quite a lot in the field of the uh, embedded system field, so that uh, if we face such kind of thing and we accidentally use such kind of code, maybe we will get into a really, really bad situation. So that is that is the reality, what Sony, Panasonic, or those kind of members uh, are right now facing. So maybe you are so much surprised at this. No, 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 what I think you're saying is that when you have the software code, you can write things because you have the processes and you check Yeah, yeah, that's that's making that seems to be making sense. However, uh, the uh, discussion with the Taiwanese companies, people, uh, they always say that no one understands that kind of thing in the senior management level. So that uh, if we, they try to uh, try to implement some sort of the process internally in each company, 
the more I'm going to support his uh, activities. So that, that, that's why I wonder, because I've done some of these as a consultant with people, and if you try to give different organizations a single document, they all know how difficult that is, and that's why I was trying to understand is the implementation issue giving them basic tools like the 10 or the 15 points that should be in a policy? Mm -hmm. And then maybe there's some advice around. I'm going to use yeah. the policy as one example yeah. of the process for checking yeah. or certification, whatever you do. But um, is what we're trying to achieve to, to get that high level, or is it to actually produce a complete track for a company? Is this well, uh, well, well, I see that <laughs> that's, kind of, that's something of the applied controversial, maybe. Um, we have to look more closely into the reality of those kind of people, especially in Taiwan or China. Um, uh, the people sitting here will be able to rush the extinguishing the GPU license down away from the EU, that kind of thing, of course. But uh, those people will not have any of that. To make that kind of thing. I'd like to turn over to Sammy now uh, for Sammy's comments. Yeah, I mean, I was going, I was going to comment on um, on the fact that actually today we have quite a number of tools. I think the real difficulty is the automation of uh, of the output from these tools. What we find, certainly within ARM, is that there's quite a lot of manual intervention uh, and at interpreting results from tools like Phosology, for example, because you really need to go and, and look at, okay, if I'm downloading a package um, uh, from a particular project, I might not necessarily be distributing the whole uh, package. So you really need to go down and, and drill down this, to, to understand what are you actually distributing in your in your software to then create a subset of the, the <laughs> bill of material and the applicable SPDX for what you're distributing. And, and that is a real challenge because it is a very time consuming. Anybody from an engineering background will, will, will agree that it is just too, too time consuming and we need to figure out how do we um, uh, take the tools a bit further to automate the 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 the, the process and also um, <clears throat> and also um, when when you know somebody mentioned um, uh, about uh, you know receiving a whole SDK typically if you receive the whole SDK yes there might be some GPL components or something that you're particularly worried about a particular license but if you're not going to be distributing that and just using it as a tool to create um, output which is which which is uh, part of your software that you're distributing um, you, you know if you have exceptions then you only care about the bits that you distribute and today there is no automation to make that distinction if you um, just run a scan on a package um, it will give you the whole bill of material for everything um, uh, in, in it, that, that, it, that has been found in the package. And, and I think we need to come, come, come up with some strategy for A, developing the tools further, and B, also conveying the information when you make your identification to be clear about you know what your process and procedure for making those identifications so uh, so for example you can say i'm using this sdk but the components that i'm distributing are x and y because again that builds confidence um when 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 somebody further down the chain receives your spdx file they, they would be confident that yes somebody has done that due diligence Uh, <laughs> it looks like both Alexius from Intel and Marcel from Bosch are dying to say something here. <laughs> All right, table's yours. So, because obviously everyone is struggling with the same issues, and thanks Sami for yeah. raising them up again. Uh, there was a book uh, yesterday and that introduced this idea that some of us have been working for uh, yeah, almost a year now. Yes. Uh, uh, about the whole uh, workflow for compliance and how do all these tools that we all know and love and use and hate, uh, how do we uh, combine them? And so we're trying to get uh, you know the big picture. Uh, we need to have a thing that scans. We need to have a thing that creates reports. 
and what are the artifacts and stuff like that. And actually, we're planning tomorrow morning a session uh, to further discuss this. Everyone is welcome to attend at nine o'clock somewhere in this hotel. I think we have a room, but I don't remember the name. But uh, yeah. So yeah, obviously, you know, we have the basic tools which are the building blocks, but we need to discuss and have uh, you know, a common way to approach the whole workflow of compliance. Clemens will come up. Nine o'clock, Clemens. Clemens. Clemens, G-L-A-M-I-S, Clemens. I suppose the big question for us at this table is to what extent should the Open Chain project be involved in helping to complete this narrative? So, you know, our, our mission is to identify the key requirements of a quality open source compliance program. And what we found is that the standard is well accepted, people really like it, but there's a lot of heavy lifting in reference material and implementation where people have trouble. Uh, Alexius is running the curriculum, which is essentially our main way of addressing this by providing reference training material, reference processes, reference policies. Uh, we, at this round robin, this first bit of communication we had in the workshop, it seems that reference tooling is maybe the biggest pain point that people are bringing up. And for those of you on the line who missed the initial section because the um, horrific polycom that was set up here was not functioning properly, my apologies for that. Uh, essentially, we're having a quick round robin about what's on people's minds. And tooling is clearly there. Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, Open Chain should work on that reference tooling stack? Should we lend support to SPDX and Fossology to help create a reference implementation? Or should we steer clear of that and stay at the very high level? On one side, because you guys <laughs> on the scanning side sound like you're already doing some of this work. So any comments about that? Yeah, perhaps one, one uh, first comment, because uh, exactly that was driving us last year already. When we made the, in the, in the last LinuxCon last year in Europe, we had some talks. Uh, Thomas Stenbergen presented his work, we presented our stuff. And after that, well, we looked at each other and said, well, we were talking about the same thing. <laughs> and uh, so we, we set up this, this first meeting, so, uh, the last 12 months. And my intention was already, so my um, picture of open chain is really, as Shane said, the process, the, the trainings, and, and that's important for me to have that, that picture that we want to work out there in this, in this other group that's uh, also reviewed by this group so that this is exactly the interface because we're not talking about implementation of tools there. We, they should stay in the open source projects where they are, but there should be an overall picture uh, so that we have no potentially no overlaps, so so that we have synergies and all this stuff, and that we also have this link to the process that say, okay, here we need this database, this data inputs, here we need those scanning analysis policies, all this stuff, and also uh, the the link to the roles who who uses this. And I think uh, this is a quite good opportunity to exchange every person's experience in terms of using such kind of tools, like a person's you know presentation, which he gave will be that kind of thing will be quite inform informative for us to share. But I think uh, it's a bit you know too early to think something about uh, uh, well uh, making it some of the generic you know, packaging of the open chains you know solution for making that kind of uh, code scanning because there are a bunch of selections right now for the scanning to exist. So that anyway I I think uh, it must be a quite uh, important to share that kind of experience to be shared with this in the table to keep on. One, one limitation that we have, perhaps we have to mention that, is we focus on open source. So mm -hmm. we want to have the whole tool chain open source without any That's suppliers right. in, yeah, in there. That's right. So they might also come in someday to say, okay, these are the interfaces. We can serve those interfaces where, for example, this is SPDX, but they can do their business, but we have our reference implementation. 
I saw Sammy uh, unmuted. Sammy, do you have uh, an item you'd like to cover? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was going to say, I think uh, what I would like to see um, is open chain um, a, a, a sort of giving end-to-end uh, example implementation, sort of, uh, sort of, uh, sort of, uh, sort of uh, you know, if people share their ideas about this is how we've accomplished a, a step-by-step almost guide, and these are the tools, and this is what we had to do. That that becomes a good learning um, uh, process for others. So I, I would say. Yes, stitching up the tooling uh, and and having various examples, I I, I strongly believe that that should be under the open source, uh, under the open chain project remit. And we won't be able to cover every single flow, but at least giving those example implementations sort of end to end will will help with the adoption of the the specification uh, uh, to a wider audience. Just to, oh, Dave Marr has unmuted. Dave, the floor is yours. Thanks. I just uh, I just want to um, uh, sort of add my two cents in there as to as to the a tool chain and describing the flows. I think that is a good a good um, a good exercise for open chain to consider because at its core, open chain is about you know the practical aspects of implementation. Uh, so that we can do things in a consistent way to create quality throughout the supply chain, and I think if we're if we're stuck on the sort of the, the tooling flow aspect, I think that's helpful. I don't I don't think that anyone's suggesting that we get into, let's say, um, you know, beyond the interfaces, you know, get into um, some projects that other projects have already sort of um, have the have the expertise on. For example, I don't think we're asking ourselves to. Um, you know, get into the Fossology project or get into the SPDX project, those projects are healthy and they're, they're running on their own. We're talking about tooling flows so the interfaces between that. Um, that's just one point. And then the other point I wanted to make is um, I do respect that idea that, uh, that uh, tooling choices, uh, having an open source option is an, an important one. But I think also, in my mind, a healthy ecosystem also doesn't preclude the ability for commercial opportunities uh, for not just on the tooling side, but also the consulting side. And I do I do hope that the healthy ecosystem allows for, for that uh, and also allowing for an open source workflow as well for the, for the tooling, but not exclusively. Those are my thoughts, thanks. Thanks, Dave. I guess one of the points that is bubbling up here is that uh, we should very clearly make it a reference implementation or reference implementations so that we're not being uh, prescriptive, uh, that people know that this is an example. Uh, Would it be useful if we put together a a work team or repurposed one of our work teams, I'm looking at Alexius here, (laughs) to to work on the end-to-end reference example uh, where maybe we could just show, here's how we go. And it, I mean, a lot of people are nodding their heads that they want a reference, and I'm just wondering if people would also nod their heads if we say, "Can you help make this?" <laughs> yeah, I think uh, this should be the next step. So I would propose as a first step that people contribute their own setup as a you know special use case. This is how we do it, right? Without trying to be this, it will be the reference and everyone. Should Right, and once we start collecting some of these, right, we can start, you know, seeing the abstraction and say, yeah, okay, everyone is doing these three steps, so we can describe some three steps, right? So yeah, instead of trying to push people to, uh, you know, think of the general idea and stuff like that, let's start simple. Right. Just provide the input of what exactly you're doing right now, so we can compare and see what else and. It can grow, you know, from that organically. Some general idea. Yeah, I like that kind of view of the program. And that is, uh, Weber-san is just make uh, some of the cutting, mm-hmm. cutting edge, you know, a presentation. And his presentation can be a quite good you know, example. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. If you have Yocto, you can use, you know, yeah, sure, sure, sure. that kind yeah, of yeah, we, we'll This is yeah. what we want. You know, yeah. More examples of this one instead yeah. of trying to create something general. Okay. So case studies again, and I mean, we're yeah. in the, the zone for case studies. We've been swamping the world with ca- case studies. So yeah, how we do it case studies, and then we move on to actually 
showing a reference implementation. Yeah. Yeah. Abstract. Perhaps, yeah. yeah. Okay. Optimistic looking back in the last months because, uh, um, first of all, there we need some com common language. Uh, so we have this glossary. So you're really invited to review this uh, so that we all on the same page. And the second thing is a reference for what? Because uh, every one of us has probably different development models, has different uh, technologies, has different license portfolios, and this, these three per, uh, parameters are and heavily, heavily, heavily in. <laughs> plus, I added that for my slides tomorrow because I will have to talk. This is the legacy system that you have in your company, so no one will just swap it over, swap it away, and, sure. and uh, replace it by a new system. So um, this is all. The bots that I, I want to mention. So there's, I think, enough enough work left in this uh, in this area <laughs> to discuss. Um, the glossary. Uh, Okay. Glossary of information. Um, on the case studies front, you know, how we do it, case studies. Uh, can I see a show of hands? Who's willing to submit a case study? <laughs> see, that might be the challenge with the case studies. Anyway, Fujitsu made that first challenge. All right, Fujitsu did show us the first one, so I'm going to put down Fujitsu well, here. Unfortunately, Sony is not using such kind of tool so much in intensively. It's sort of the I cannot have any knowledge to share with yeah, you. It's, it's not about the tools. It's we also we have some some steps that we cannot automate maybe. Right. Right. And there, for example, we have services house in our in-house services doing that. And we were also talking with other companies about how could we share first those those services. So this is also helpful to have that kind of a black box to okay, here's the input, this is the output, and well this right. is not done today by a tool, but at least there must be a service because you're depending on the output. So there must be some way how it's produced. So that kind of you know, every company's style will be another you know thanks. We will be able to say that is for example for Sony's case, Sony do not have a plenty of people who can have one hundred percent engaged for the open source software, only 3%. So that uh, instead of that, we are taking one another you know, strategy that uh, to make a mature you know, education. That is that uh, more than uh, 1,000 people already went through about uh, one day, uh, nine hours you know, uh, technical training of the open source software. And that's making another you know, situation right now. Everybody autonomically uh, makes some, something in terms of the open source software and uh, they can make themselves a uh, to detect what is that something uh, to re which requires some professional help. So that uh, maybe it's something like a medical system. We are implementing some such kind of you know, uh, home doctors in each business unit, and each business unit home doctor can be consulted, can make a consultation to each of those kind of behavior. But uh, if those kind of home doctors accept, they will come to me. That is a university, you know, uh, high, university level uh, hospital. Like Kareli uh, uh, is also uh, one of the uh, dedicated, you know, uh, sophisticated university doctor in the uh, Sony micro, uh, Sony mobile, and that kind of system we are doing. So that uh, some of the department is actually using. Uh, source code check I like uh Cortex or Atlas ID. But some but some company is not using because the software size is not so deep and they can manage by by themselves with that. they say that they, they say that they can use some of eyeballs to check it. What I mostly heard was that Sony has just volunteered to do a case study. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> Um, so we actually are doing a couple of case studies ab about the journey to conformance with OpenChain. So we've got some companies who've stepped forward to help us out there. So we've got uh, Wind River, we've got Arm, and we've got Toyota going to do work on the journey to conformance case study. So that how, how we do uh, 
scanning or control case studies seem like a natural fit. We've got Sony and Fujitsu. Is anyone else willing to, to work on that, whether their company is named or not, just to share some knowledge of how you do it? We don't have volunteers on that. Which is a challenge. Um, okay, so you know the Japan work group can provide some information about how they do it, but I'd really like to see some other uh, international companies step forward on this one. I'm just, I'm just reluctant because we we shared this in the other group, but rather on the tool. Now. Yeah, so that's exactly. So we we need to check how we can fit that well. Perhaps once we're we're done with on a special. Um, Intermediate result that we can present that here for review and cover probably several companies that are in this other group. That would be great. So we need to keep communication with that group and see what you're up to. Dave, I saw you're unmuted. Do you have a, an addition? I just want to offer that uh, you know Qualcomm's interested in uh, in helping in that uh, you know case study work, um, but I need to speak with Nathan when he gets back from vacation. Super cool. All right. Um, Here's an idea. How about we ask the projects like Fossology and SPDX and, and To Do Group to maybe give us a briefing, say bi monthly, to let us know where they're at? Oh, that's a good idea. Because <laughs> it, it sounds like there's a lot of stuff happening in these projects. And you know, we, we find out when we ask specific questions, but maybe we can ask for briefings so we can keep track of it. And that might lead naturally to us touching on end-to-end -end reference examples, or as Marcel put it, knowing the right point where we can get uh, case studies. Okay, I want to keep us moving along. Uh, so we had some kind of problem comments about what people feel is working and what's not working. Uh, one of the items that was covered was about how Fujitsu is working on SPDX and how some tools work and some don't. Another thing was that the actual projects doing scanning are, are working on showing us how it, it really can work. Um, the last problem statement we're going to have is uh, from Ueda Sam. Yes, I do. Like Let's say something. Okay, I will be there. Yeah. Uh, we're going to keep it within about 10 minutes, if that's okay, Ueda Sam. No, no, no. It's something right in the background. But anyway, I just mentioned that uh, I'm experiencing some of the terrible, terrible issues of the uh, about the open source software compliance matter. That is, uh, and I have told, I have uh, told, uh, I'd like to mention two major aspects. One is the think about open chain network nodes, and about a uh, second, second one is think about the upper stream contract contact. So first, uh, this is something quite you know like talk. Uh, we are talking about the open chain networking system, networking. So, of course, if we face some of the uh, uh, upper stream trouble of the uh, transferring the uh, open source software information appropriately, so that uh, some of the downstream company like me will be quite so much suffer. And we'd like to avoid this kind of case. So that uh, that is why this, you know, uh, work group, uh, open chain project was the informed. And thinking about this, you know, networking, I'm now coming to one of the consideration that is that uh, each node have an, uh, have each uh, characteristics. For example, uh, the most upper stream community, uh, upper stream node of the open chain is a community node. Like uh, John Bacon, uh, Lina Tupers are making that kind of you know, uh, formation of the community of the open source project. And they are making a great effort to create, uh, in, uh, initiate the open source software by themselves. And in some cases, they are collecting another you know, open source software. And some of the cases we are seeing, they, have do, not, they do not have enough, inf enough knowledge about the open source software licensing and uh, making some of the you know confusion uh, by themselves. And second one is distri distributor node, like uh, Google's you know uh, uh, Android team. And third one is B2B node. And fourth one is uh, N node. That is uh, something like a, a server system or a cloud system. They are quite a limited case uh, observed to make another you know, distribution. So that that is an N node. But for the case of the consumer electronics people like me, 
That is a B2C node. That B2C node is really crazy. That is a, we have to make a bunch of you, another you know, distribution so that uh, we have a bunch of you know, opportunity to consider about open source software compliance issue so severely. And the case is uh, quite, uh, quite exactly the same to the automotive, automotive industry people. So maybe this kind of you know, uh, consideration will be quite helpful for, to think about the open chain discussion. So anyway, the first discussion will be focusing upon the uh, this you know distributor uh, distribution node B two B node and B two C and in some case end node. But in future, maybe we'd like to extend the, some of the uh, you know focus uh, towards the uh, community node and because uh, the original commun original community do not understand the open source software licensing or those kind of issue appropriately then it will make another you know, uh, another miserable situation so that the uh, uh, second phase will be uh, reaching to this you know, community node. That is uh, proposed by the Fujitsu uh, person. And Fujitsu person, uh, IT department person, are uh, really uh, curious about uh, And also, they are, uh, she is uh, thinking something quite serious about uh, this kind of really upper, upper stream, you know, uh, nodes issue. So anyway, uh, in the Japan work group, we are keeping that, this kind of you know uh, thought as on the background of the discussion and making some of the progress of the uh, what kind of thing which, which we should do. And another thing is think about the upper stream contact. contact. Uh, this is a fishbone chart. I do not like this kind of you know chart because it's not fitting to my manner. But anyway. Uh, when we uh, make, uh, try to make uh, some of the communication to the upper stream uh, people, maybe it's always coming from the uh, counterpart salesperson that is uh, only Sony is requesting such information about open source software. And uh, it is back, but they, have, they may have some of the backup from their legal and IPD stuff. And in some cases, uh, legal and IPD stuff says that, that we do not have they do not have any obligation to provide such kind of information to the downstream. It's actually happening. And in some cases, the, uh, some of the uh, software, actual software de de developers seems not to have sufficient information because in some cases, uh, they cannot obtain some of the good information from the upper stream. And that kind of thing is uh, uh, happening something quite recursively. And of course, insufficient understanding of the uh, uh, you know, senior management level, level people are always uh, observed. So anyway, uh, looking to the each you know, uh, module of the node, maybe there's, a, there's a several uh, organizations who, who should understand the open source software license issue. That will be, uh, of course, being an IPD expert and senior management level people a software developers, and also sales and marketing, OEM, ODM, arrangement, uh, you know, ma uh, manager, or procurement managers. And I have just introduced one quite you know, miserable case, which I have observed just recently, that are extinguishing the, the, the you know, GPA license comment, comment as well as the uh, copyright notice. That's really terrible. But on the other hand, I am experiencing another case that is a quite good case, although we have detected, detected one in ideal case of the, uh, using the open source software. And we reported to the upper stream people. And upper stream people, especially the sales and the marketing people studied it. And they, have, they could get understood what happened and what they should do. And then, they gave me a really, they gave, they gave us a really, really, really good solution to us. Then I got, we got to know, especially Sony, that is a sales and marketing, that is a counterpart of ours, will be one of the quite key person. And of course, they do not understand what is open source and they do not, and they initially <laughs> hardly understand what we are requesting. But when we can make uh, some of the appropriate, in, uh, to provide some of the appropriate information to the upper stream people, especially uh, to the gateway people, that, that is the uh, sales and marketing people, 
about what kind of information and why those kind of information is required. That will make a great sense we are getting to believe. So uh, they will, uh, for my case, uh, that sales and marketing group uh, made a great, you know, a great arrangement to the software developers, legal IT depart dep department experts, and in some cases, uh, made uh, some of the appeal to the senior management people in their, you know, first stream, you know, manufacturer company. So this is just an idea. We'd like to prepare some of the brochure to mm. tell the upper stream sales and marketing people why, what is open source? What, why open chain issue, if open mm. chain is really one of the issues? And what is expected to the upper stream, you know, people? And why is the open chain and what we have? Like uh, uh, some of the specification, sales uh, checking, you know, scheme, that kind of thing. Also, the, uh, make an appeal to the upper stream pe people. And we initially thought that uh, may taking place of the, some, some of the public events in Taiwan or in China will make some sense to reach our uh, message to those people. But uh, we have very much surprised that uh, I sat, I sat together with the Tato san at the other uh, stage, and every people attending there seems to be made uh, some of the culture shock because they are supposed to be that uh, uh, different company people should not sit in the same room. So that uh, I'm now a bit you know, reluctant to make a, this, that kind of you know, public event to reach this kind of information to those kind, kind of people. But I am not giving up. We should keep, keep on that kind of effort. But another you know, candidate is to, to our contact, I mean that sales and marketing person of the upper stream people. So that uh, I am, um, this is my, uh, I, I hope I would, I'd like to make a volunteer that, that uh, We'd like to make uh, some of the, uh, you know, prepare the, that kind of document and uh, to share each company's people. And I will say to the upper stream people, this is the, not Sony's document, but this is the document of Linux Foundation Open Chain Project. That's a new tool. Everybody, every company people will bring this kind of same, you know, document and say something quite exact, quite same thing. And that kind of thing, well, uh, you know, less that kind of, you know, my concern that is every people will say that it's only Sony that's saying such kind of uh, quite a hard thing, but uh, it's not Sony, but not only Sony, but everybody speak out. And that is uh, what I am uh, start, you know, con uh, discussion within the Japan work group. And I hope you to support this kind of activities. Of course, first, I am good at speaking and writing Japanese so that the original document will be prepared in uh, Japanese and maybe will be translated into English. And that is backed up by the uh, actual headache of ourselves so that uh, maybe it will not be suffi sufficient to you all. But uh, as, a, as an assignment, the first you know, edition, I hope you to understand that kind of situation and uh, take, uh, let us take some of the initiative. And for the second uh, step, we also would like to anticipate uh, global people's you know, uh, uh, participation to prepare that kind of document to tell the upper stream people's counterpart. That is what I'm thinking about it. So uh, this is what uh, we are uh, start uh, you know, discussing in Japanese. And another mm -hmm. one more information is that uh, I have just you know, released my book, that is the uh, of, uh, textbook of open source software license now on store in, Jap in Japan. 300 pages. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is not translated in there uh, so that uh, everybody will be hard to read. But uh, I hope this kind of effort will help many people some. Okay, that's it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. So we, we have been talking about targeting procurement a lot. It seems pretty natural and easy to add sales and marketing to it. Yeah. Uh, I had actually a question. Yeah. What did you introduce like when you present the chain of software? I think uh, uh, Sam made an interesting you know, comment earlier on the point that what you receive is not necessarily what you distribute. 
So you may be, you know, creating a lot of, maybe requiring a lot of uh, evidence, artifacts, yeah. which may end up not, not helpful at all. Yeah. And, you know, so you, in your own plan, and, you know, I understand that until we have you know, the adequate tools to kind of accurately predict what will end up being distributed, and this is, this is maybe uh, slightly dangerous. Creating a lot of uh, very handy mechanism like, uh, uh, to solve the problem, which may be there for like 10% of the code, 20% of the code. Yeah, I think so. That the uh, this is open to the network is something quite complicated. And um, every node has their own new idea what some of the platform, what some of the knowledge there, or that kind of variety we have. So that uh, we have to be reminded by ourselves that we are actually then making a part of those kind of situations. But that is quite big challenge. But so I think the, the, you know, following up on that, I have kind of like, uh, as, not necessarily as an alternative, maybe, have you considered maybe a model which is uh, liability based mm -hmm. instead of you know full disclosure based? So that you you know you kind of wait for that for an issue to come up and then you drop the chain back to the source of liability. Instead of you know, trying to solve everything from the wrong. Yeah, no, I, I understand that the I'm not saying it's it's a solution for everyone, but the extent that some people are comfortable, that could be you know kind of one way to shortcut a lot of the uh, administrative requirements. And one one thing that you know comes up is that we actually have a few mechanisms for let's say tracking quality not just in companies, but also in projects. So one of the adjacent projects to OpenChain is uh, CII, the Core Infrastructure Initiative. And they've got a thing called the Best Practices Badge, which allows projects to show that they've got a high level of quality and fidelity. And that kind of then is a natural, you know, it ends at the edge of the projects and then we begin at the corporate side. Maybe again, we're touching on the fact that you know, we need to integrate better from CII to open chain, from the tooling that the projects use to the tooling the companies use. So, yeah. I don't know what you can get around the world. I used to work with all the time. I used to have the same conversation every day with all this who was my used to do open source, and it got very boring. So what I started to do was go to conferences. Where do you go and where do you sort? I go to conferences that would be the supply chain Yeah, that's yeah. we are thinking about this. So that this uh, is material <coughs> will be mainly used for the maternity for some kind of marketing tools. And also uh, another thing is that uh, this is an uh, extension of the uh, yesterday's discussion that at the uh, open compliance time, which we are planning uh, in the December time, we are now seeing some of the uh, struggle of the teams forming the community of the legal person. So that uh, another uh, you know uh, good uh, a good thing is that we are seeing that uh, even the uh, legal people are uh, making some community to uh, collaborate with the other. It's passing to the same station, so I promote to the OSS conference in blue and green person, but uh, uh, this is my own matter. But uh, uh, my uh, personal issue is that uh, how and uh, what to do for the company who don't understand OSS, uh, to don't try to understand OSS. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, who is the uh, window section? It is a sales and marketing. Yeah, I have a question. I'm not sure. Um, there we also discussed the idea of having like one pager, maybe not directly for the uh, 
procurement or marketing, we want, we want to first create something for the uh, management to create awareness about open source for the management. Yeah, because some participants there in the working group they are saying that their management does not fully understand yeah. why are we doing yeah. open source, and they say, yeah. I can I can talk a lot of things there, and if I prepare something. There's something that comes from the official uh, yeah. authority yeah. or from the project. Uh, yeah. This would be really understand. helpful. And I think I there will be this year, end of this year, there will be an initiative starting um, there. And I'm not sure. Maybe we can also collaborate there. That would be great. So Bitcom is basically working on this idea already. Yeah, for this, for the management. Yeah? Right. We have one pager about open source and what does it mean, what does it bring, the benefits, and um, I don't think so. Not not a general overview of value. So, uh, through the uh, which we have in developed in Taiwan is that uh, those kind of people with a software engineer seems to not have a good way to do this in one end of the level of people. So we at this moment cannot find the appropriate to reach to the you know, uh, each company's management of their level of people. But of course, my, I am intending to include some of the message through that kind of marketing guide to be expected to the management of level of people. Maybe it's two pages or something. Yeah. Uh, that is, uh, you, your company must think seriously about the open source of that kind of company. Should be included. That is uh, what. I'm just going to pass you my card so Thank that you. we can begin the Bitcom Open Chain sure. collaboration on that. Perhaps, you know, the Bitcom group could maybe do a presentation to one of our calls uh, about once a month. We have a call, and it would be really good if, you know, you could brief us on what's We will start with this, and there's someone from the working group who will drive this topic. There will be a project group working on this. Perfect. And, um, then um, we have a next meeting in November. Airport, and then I will talk to this guy. He's from the telecom. And, right. Um, we, well, we have our European compatible calls every third Monday. So the third Monday of November. Oh, really? Oh, you're right. <laughs> third Monday is Japan. <laughs> My apologies. Alexius, you're correct. Uh, first Monday calls are European compatible time zone. So maybe first Monday of December, we could have the Bitcom Open Chain collaboration start. I need to check when sure. they will start. It's on the list for a longer time already, but things well, take time. And they do. <laughs> well, I mean, we're, we're reaching the last 15 minutes of the general workshop uh, back and forth. And what I'd like to do towards the end is hand over to Alexia's uh, just to talk a little bit about curriculum, because everything that we've had today with problem statements and concerns boil down to curriculum issues. So it sounds like, you know, Alexius, you're going to be really busy going into 2019. But before that, we had a few new people join the room. So, for example, we've had Mirko um, from Endocode, we've had Keith Bergelt from OIN, we've had Kobayashi-san from Toshiba. Uh, and because pretty much everyone we expected is in the room right now, I'd just like to let you know about a couple of announcements from the Open Chain project that just happened today. Oh, Shibaba-san and Seki-san from NEC are also here. A uh, couple of announcements. First announcement is that Suze just completed Open Chain conformance. So we now have someone at the very beginning of the commercial uh, stream, Open Chain conformance, setting a great example for how things will happen. So welcome, Suze. Thank you very much for becoming Open Chain Conformant. That is super cool. And that, that has just been announced on the news wires. So we imagine that will be going around a little. The second thing I wanted to let you know is that Toshiba has now joined Open Chain as a board member. Uh, so we are very fortunate to have Toshiba build out our presence in Asia. And uh, I believe that we will be now seeing a great influence across the Japanese supply chain with companies like Hitachi and Toshiba side by side pushing open chain. So welcome very much to the board. Okay, Alexius, I'd like to 
call you over because everything has basically been about references today. <laughs> um, how, do you, how do you feel about how we should deal with all of this in the curriculum? What, what would you like to see? Okay, so as you probably know, <clears throat> the curriculum is mainly, we mainly use it as a pool of resources, right? So people contribute uh, the material that uh, and anyone can use in order. In the beginning, it was to provide the training slides. So because the object specification has a concrete requirement for providing training. Um, in the beginning, it was the the place to store the slides for uh, to help you do your training. The, always the idea was that you do not use the slides as they are there, but you adapt them to your environment. Um, after the initial slide set, we had more and more contributions, uh, and we have uh, checklists, guidelines. Uh, Slides about tooling, uh, and uh, people also started uh, <coughs> uh, modifying this. What we have not seen yet is people actually uh, going and adapting things and improving them. So it seems like people think that if somebody contributes. Uh, something in the curriculum, this has to stay fixed forever, or something like that. This is not the case. So please, if you see anything there that you don't like, uh, tell us what has to be fixed, or submit a pull request even better, so that we can have it. These were supposed, and are still supposed to be living documents, that change according to our understanding, right? Uh, we had the initial slides uh, uh, initially main, uh, based on the ARM training material, and Qualcomm uh, uh, also provides a lot of input there. Um, yeah, we do not see them evolve <laughs> so much, right? And do not think that because it's there, it's somehow, you know, Sound blessed official, and you cannot change it, and you have to adapt your life to that. Right. The whole idea is that they give the basic uh, structure, and please provide any input you want uh, into this material. Um, just before we mentioned that we can put more uh, case studies there, and again, I want to emphasize we do not expect something to be, you know, a final product. These are something that can be used everywhere, right? We just need resources that people can refer to so that they can get an idea, right? Uh, it's called curriculum, but do not think that it's, uh, you know, the, the official way to teach open source or the way official way to do it, right? It's just a pool of resources that uh, we want to, you know, uh, to be able to point people to and they're free to modify it and adapt to their own needs again. Okay. I've got one question related to curriculum. Uh, at the moment, most of our stuff, all of the project stuff, not just in curriculum, but in specification, it's all on GitHub. Uh, and I think some people have a bit of difficulty using GitHub. So I was just wondering, uh, Alexis, if you've got any ideas about um, what we could do in the case of curriculum, if people wanted to help with some material but didn't didn't use GitHub. You could use Google Docs as we like can use with inbox. Yeah, as inbox for material, and then some person are moving this to GitHub. It's a pity because of the commit statistics and the origin of GitHub would not be visible, which is one of the reasons of GitHub that could be used. Again, the GitHub infrastructure was. Uh, selected for collaboration, right? If people want a different infrastructure for that, we're <laughs> obviously all for it. Uh, perhaps they just need the training material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Because 
I mean, in aesthetics, we take legal, those are legal, legal or are not yes. to use GitHub. And, uh, but anyway, the Japan Work Group team uh, intensely used the GitHub, but uh, we are finding uh, several problems. That is, some of the company, major companies, you know, proxy server, uh, do not accept to go through <laughs> GitHub in <laughs> application. Okay. That is a problem. Uh, maybe it's too headed to us and already there. I think. Anyway, the latest example of collaboration that we're setting up was based on the, uh, the series of questions that came out for the uh, onboarding team. And, uh, and this I have translated to a Google Doc so that, you know, uh, the idea is to come up in the end with uh, frequently asked questions because we already have on the website, uh, we have. At least three, three or four different frequently asked question sets. Uh, one for each part of open chain, one for the curriculum, one for specification, one for performance, and one for the whole project. And we have now uh, collected a number of more questions that need to be answered. So, you know, there is also a Google Doc that has all this content there if people are more inclined to, you know, edit that one and prefer that to be. Again, we are not you know, fixed in our ways in any way. And we are flexible and agile. May I raise one more uh, issue about the uh, curriculum? That is, uh, I'm just wondering who can be a teacher? Because uh, it's also one of the uh, you know, experience which I have experienced in Taiwan. We apparently, Florence and Lucian, which we are making at some of the those two guys can make a great, you know, a, can become a great teacher, but only maybe only two people within yeah. Taiwan. That's two less. So that uh, I am wondering uh, how to foster those kind of people who can teach everybody and do not let them let let the students, you know, sleep. That's kind of you know, fantastic people. We have to foster. foster. And. Uh, of course, I do not have any you know, concrete idea, but uh, for example, uh, we are now, including me, are now reaching to some sort of the retirement you know, age. And that kind of uh, you know, elderly person can be uh, make another you know, uh, contribution to make uh, that kind of you know, teaching, those kind of things. So that, that is one of the, my, my thoughts, but uh, at this moment, because I do not find any good you know, teacher so that I wrote the book. So anyway, I hope uh, everybody uh, together to consider how to foster those kind of talent who can teach with uh, some of the excitement of the open source software. Very important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to find, to <laughs> find people. Seen. Yes. Uh, to some extent, we had luck in Europe with what's called the European Legal Network and the yearly conference held in Barcelona because experienced legal experts would, in effect, teach people who are less experienced. I suppose that one thing we can do is continue to have workshops and conferences around Open Chain to try to spread knowledge. This particular workshop has really been about a series of problem statements, each of which boil down to reference material, <laughs> which, you know, it's really good to know that Basically, people are talking about how do we realize this now? Not, you know, is this good, is this not? Uh, let's, let's proceed then. Let's try to get reports from projects like Fossology, SPDX, Kadoo Group. Let's try and bring that into Open Chain, given that we're the starting point. Let's try and get case studies. Uh, we've got three companies. Um, kind of almost ready with case studies, so Fujitsu, Sony, and Paul. Sony. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay. Yeah, you volunteered. I'm sorry, but it's done now. It's on my minutes. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, and we'll try and get a few more about the how we do it, automation or non-automated, just how we do it. And then we have end-to-end uh, -end reference examples, or something to get to after that. Meanwhile, targeting sales and marketing and procurement. And Amanda raised an interesting point that maybe we should go to the conferences for these people, not open source, not business management, but procurement and sales. Um, if, if I go to these conferences, I'm happy to give a talk and also to develop a slide set adjacent to the leaflet. 
I was just wondering, does anyone else at this table go to that type of conference? Do you have any reach in those areas? And would you be willing to talk about open chain? I, I think we did already to some extent. For example, I, I proposed with Alex Katz to, to be at the uh, financial blah, blah, blah event in London. I have forgotten Finos, it's called, yeah. right? That's so, right. The and, and I think we, we were, uh, like in, in February, we were at Bitcoin. Presenting about open chain already. I'm, I'm quite excited about the chance to work together with Bitcom on uh, you know this possible leaflet that you're going to be producing. So let, let's try to target first of this uh, first Monday of December, if possible. <clears throat> okay. Um, so in the open arena of the workshop part of this, does anyone else have any items they'd like to quickly cover? <clears throat> All right.